salvation. Today is the day to get right with God. Today is the day to make amends with God before he delivers recompense onto each individual. America is slipping further and further into the gutter, choosing more and more wickedness. Lawlessness is abounding, and the judgment of God is about to be poured out upon all of America. We chose to practice abominations before the Lord, yet we say that we're receiving mercy. We ask for the blessings of God, yet walk in willful disobedience to Him. The wrath of God is coming to America. The wrath of God is about to be poured out, and men need to turn from their sinful living and turn towards God. And the only remedy for the wrath of God to be stayed off of America is for our hearts to be broken before God, for us to be contrite over our sin before God. Apart from that, as long as we thump our chest and tell God how powerful nation we are and how we will do what we want, God's wrath is coming. God is about to pour His wrath out on all the ungodly who practice ungodliness. America needs to repent. America needs to turn back to God today. They need to get right with the sovereign creator of heaven and earth. We see the events unfolding that are telling us what season we live in. We know that there are wars and rumors of war. There is an abundance of violence and homosexuality all over this land. It's an abomination and an unclean thing before God. And all those who agree with it are going to be condemned just as though they had done it. When you go by the philosophy, live and let live, and you don't stand for God, you let those practice sin, transgender bathrooms, have we lost our minds? God is angry with the wicked every day. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says he trieth the righteous, but his, his soul hateth the wicked and the soul that loves violence. I'm sorry, sir. Oh, no, but you have to go for you coming, everybody. Yes, sir. That's so if, you know, park rangers or uh, someone tries to threaten me with violence, I just kind of, I don't get, get misrepresented in court and things like that. Why is they threatening you with violence? Well, some people don't agree with the First Amendment right for freedom of speech. I've had people throw stuff at me, spit on me. That's horrible. Yeah, well, you know, the, the word of God gets people angry, especially when it starts to convict their hearts, when it shows that they're not in right standing with God. So as an ambassador of Christ, I have to preach the whole counsel of God, not just his grace, but also his wrath. So you preach his wrath so people would yearn for his grace and his mercy and his forgiveness. But until a man knows he's lost, he thinks he's still walking right. He still thinks he's okay. But you have to open up his eyes to the fact that he's on a broad way which leads to destruction. That way has to be changed and placed onto a narrow path, which is uh, into the righteousness of Christ Jesus. But so keeping it balanced. That's we have to keep it balanced. The gospel is a very balanced message, um, but it's hard to tell someone who is in rebellion against God that they're okay with God. In fact, the Bible says, like you hear a lot of preachers, and all they preach is, you know what, God loves you, and just the way you are, but that's not true. Yeah. In fact, the Bible says this, and um, I think it's the book of Malachi, says, you have weird me, says the Lord. It says, in what way have we weird you, in that you say that those who practice evil are good in the sight of the Lord. So if someone's practicing evil, a man of God who's proclaiming the word of God should say, hey, you're practicing evil. And the Bible says in these last days, people are going to start calling what's evil good and good evil. So men of God have to come and start taking a stand, proclaiming the gospel, one, to save souls, two, to point out the wickedness that's in the nation. Would you agree within the past 10 years, our nation has just slid in into puddles of wickedness? Uh, yeah. the, the violence, the homosexuality, sod the sodomites uh, gaining power in our nation. Um, the devil is at work in our nation. And we could say, well, we could vote our way out of it. That's not true. See, it's going to get worse until Jesus Christ comes back. That's why uh, I'm here to proclaim that, that we could only be saved through Jesus Christ. And we have to surrender to him. That means we have to repent, which means turn from our sinful living and re receive him as Lord, as though he were the president over the whole universe. Hey, he makes laws. I'm going to obey him. I'm going to follow him because that's the type of people that's going to be in his kingdom is those who have uh, become subservient to him, who bowed the knee to him without rebellion. And all the rebels, the Bible says he's going to destroy the sinners from off the earth. So we have to see which are we. Are we a sinner or are we a saint? And we have to amend our ways to be right with God. He's not changing for us. God's not going to change and amend his ways. We have to amend to him. And I, I stand to testify I'm not preaching from an ivory tower. I was lost in heroin addiction. I was a thief, a liar. I was probably the worst sinner you could ever find. 
But when I met Jesus Christ and I did what his word taught, not what men taught me his word taught, just what his word taught. I received the power that he said I would receive, which was the Holy Ghost, and I had victory over my sin. See, uh, some people will preach, oh, you know what, you can continue in sin and God's still okay with that. No, Jesus said if you, if you sin, you're a servant to sin. But he who the Son sets free is free indeed. So the, that's a contrary message to what's preaching in lots of pulpits today. Uh, lots of pulpits say, you know what, we're all sinners, we're going to sin every day. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible says when we're saved, we're no longer debtors to the flesh, to obey the lust thereof. So when we're saved and we have the power, our life is the evidence that God has impacted our life. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, behold, he's a new, crea he's a new creature. The old things pass away, my heroin addiction, my fornication, my lying, my cheating, it passed away, and all things become new now I stand here and proclaim his glorious gospel and nine years ago I was a gangster I was doing crazy off the wall stuff and I didn't have any love for anybody now God's placed a love in my heart to even risk embarrassment before all of humanity because the Bible says this message is foolishness to those who are perishing and that uh, we should become fools for the sake of Christ it's okay that people would think that I'm crazy standing here proclaiming the gospel that's okay if the world thinks that but the fact is, that's an evidence that Jesus Christ has changed my life, that he's turned me from sin. The Bible says when the church first received the power of the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2, the first thing they did was run into the streets and tell people of Jesus Christ, preach the gospel to them because they were filled with the Holy Ghost. That was the whole church. And men were saved and men were lost. But what we have to do is get back to proclaiming the full counsel of God, knowing the terror of the Lord, the Bible says, we persuade men. See, my, my whole goal here is to persuade men to get right with God. And, you know, obviously, as everybody here is proclaiming, yeah, we see the world getting worse. But what are we going to do about that? These are signs that God's given us to tell us, hey, better get right with me. I'm coming back, and I'm going to judge the quick and the dead for deeds done in the body, both good and evil. See, God's trying to send out warnings to people. So if you're not right with God today, I, I wouldn't lead you in a prayer. I wouldn't say, hey, just say this prayer, and you're right with God. I'll do what God told us to do. He said to, he commanded people, men, as the Bible says, but men and women is what it's talking about. He commands men everywhere to repent and believe the gospel. So that's that's what we're called to do. So if you're not right with God today, you know, and you don't have to get right before me, you have to get right before him. So as you go in your way, you think about God, you think about Jesus Christ, and, and you know, you think about everything that we said and say, am I right with God? The Bible says we should examine ourselves to see whether we're in the faith. Know you not whether the Spirit of Christ resides within you, unless indeed you fail the test. You should know that you have the Holy Ghost if, if you actually do. And if you don't, Humble yourself before God. Ask Him to forgive you of your sins. Turn from those sins and receive Him as Lord. And He'll do exactly what He says. And I stand here and testify that. I stand here and testify to what He's done. Yes, you. sir. Thank you. He's doing a good work yeah, through me. I like that you admit that you've come from the dark part of that. Because I don't mm -hmm. think you really know how good something can be until you've seen the dark side of it. That's, that's, a lot of people are not willing to admit that side. Well, you know, one of the things that I... that's See, that's the testimony. Because the Bible says that we overcome Him, meaning Satan, the deceiver, the one who keeps us blind. We overcome Him by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony. That means the things that He brought us out of and that we have not loved our lives unto death, meaning that I could I could be just as well sitting in my house right now on the couch, but my life's not that valuable to where it's all about me. My life has to become about Him first and then about you. You know, so I have to die to self to come out and proclaim the gospel to you. So me testifying, because if, if I didn't testify that, that'd be my own pride, and that's, that's a sin before God in itself. That'd be my own pride, because I didn't want you to think I was ever a sinner. But I, I want people to know the power of God to save the sinner and transform him into a saint of God. See, God doesn't save people and leave them sinners. He transforms their lives and calls them to be saints. That's what the church is made up of, the saints of God. Uh, Catholics often believe that saints of God have done some works to become saints. No, saints of God are those who place faith in Jesus Christ and His finished work of the cross. Very rare to find you out in the middle of it. Well, you know what? It's an increasing ministry. It used to be, and I think that's where why America has slidden so far away from God is because it used to be, if you was a preacher, guess what you was doing? Standing on a soapbox preaching to sinners. But today, preachers, you know, they're preaching self-help, motivational speeches, taking offering on Sunday. And then when you leave, hey, that's, that's about as concerned for your soul as they are. But when you think of all the good preachers of, you know, yesteryear, when they got done behind the pulpit, they went into the streets and they were hated by the world. And the only people that really loved them were those who were converted, had converted hearts because they preached in front of the beer gardens. They preached in front of the whorehouses and not just to condemn, to point out that they were already condemned, that they might be saved, that they would come to Christ and be born again. Because the Bible says, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 
our religious practices. If, if we're not born again, they mean nothing to God. Uh, we could go to church every day of the week. It's still not going to be pleasing to God until our hearts convert it. And the Bible says, Repent ye therefore that your sins may be blotted out. Repent ye and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Your heart has to be changed. You have to. Uh, and men don't like to admit that they, they're haters of God. But the Bible says, Those who practice evil hateth the light. And that light being spoke of is Jesus Christ. So when we're workers of iniquity and we practice evil, it's just an, uh, an identification to us that we hate God. That, and we may not profess that. We may say we love God, but there's so much lip service on God. The Bible says there are those who say they love God, but their hearts are far from Him. And those who say they know God, but they deny Him in their works. So our deeds kind of put on display whether or not we are really right with God. The Bible says faith without works is dead. Our lives become amended to Christ whenever we're willing to receive Him as Lord. And I read this book, and this book, don't let no man deceive you, this book is the truth. And there's many men who are, you know, uh, sound a lot smarter than I am. But uh, when I read this book and I see the power that's in it, after, after I became born again, because I, I tried reading it lost once and it was just Greek to me. But when my heart was changed and I received the Spirit of Christ, this book became alive to me and I was able to uh, rightly adjust my life to please God. See, God did something uh, besides just giving us His Son. He gave us a way to please Him. The Bible says that He became the, the author of eternal salvation to all who obey Him. So that implies that we have to be obedient to God, doesn't it? And it says that we are together witnesses with the Holy Ghost, and which He has given to all them which obey Him. So that again applies, we must be obedient to God. So any doctrine tells us, hey, you don't have to live holy for God and God's still going to love you. The Bible says there's a holiness without which none shall see the Lord. So what do we have to do? Our life has to be amended. If, if we practice sin, Repentance is turning from that sin that we're practicing. And that's not saying that the Christian is incapable of sinning. After becoming, becoming a Christian, you're capable of sinning. But you should be fighting tooth and nail, not to sin. You should be in the fight. Jesus said, if your eyeball causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. And if your hand, cut it off, cast it from you. So Jesus Christ was pretty serious about us not sinning, right? Uh, the women, we often...